you're all doing well. I've got a 60 minute session I'm doing for a client. I did a, a 30 minute session just a couple months ago for this client. It was really awesome about schizophrenia. I'm gonna put a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. All right, I'm gonna read the goals here, get tuned in, and then I'm gonna be getting started. Okay. Hi, Abby. Our last session was great. It was all about schizophrenia and trauma. I could feel when you were working on me, I was sitting in my living room and all of a sudden I noticed I felt really good. Sure enough, it was 10 minutes into the appointment. Kind of got the runaround when trying to have a hippie love fest conversation and there are a lot of distractions. Spirit to spirit with the healing streams of grace has been working to allow light language and other healing and clearing. So that's cool. I'm open to big changes, new beginnings, and all the love and abundance that is here for me. I'm so ready to let go. So ready. I am so ready to believe in myself and my gifts. Whatever spirit wants to do in this session, I'm open to it. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Your energy is just so colorful. I'm just tuning into all you've shared. It's just really nice to connect with you again. And thank you as well for being open to sharing with others too. <sighs> okay. All right, it's time. It's time to do this thing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to relax now. It's almost like you ever get so many things going on at once, you don't even know what you got going on because there's just so many things. You couldn't even pinpoint one of them. There's just so many things. It's kind of like this. You ever go so fast that you're slowing down? Um, so your energy field, it's kind of like spastic with um, a lot, but it, all that a lot is uh, merging together into what is really pretty looking, but it's kind of like a glass cylindrical wall. It's got a pearlesque color to it. It's see-through. It also feels kind of like all this stuff is solidifying and everything is slowing down. So when I tap into this, it's like, Okay, what do we got going on in here? And it's like, <laughs> but then it's also not like that. It's also like nothing. And it's a lot and it's all one. And it's, it's silent, but yet it creates this energy structure. So I say, so you've decided then you decided and the decision created this. But what does this mean? It doesn't like it. It wants to, it wants to create something else. And I see all these little parts of this glass. This it's a literally like a cylindrical structure. You could walk inside of it, stand inside of it. I'm on the outside. There's little particles of this all separating now. It's like individual atoms that come together to create a structure now just separating from each other and then wanting to create something new. And each one of these particles is an idea, is a voice, And they're pretty good looking. I mean, it's like purple. It's like a purplish color. Some are pinkish color. Some are light pink. Some are darker pink. Some are, but when they all come together, it looks see-through. 
I still feel like this is way too at the surface of what we can be experiencing. Almost like a distraction. So I'm just going to let that go over there and then I'm going to keep going deeper. It's kind of like an indecisive, but it's not... It's not as at the same time. I'm going to turn around and then look at what's behind me in your energy field. I feel like I need to get you grounded. When I turn around and look at what's behind me, it's very strange. It's like a white circle and then it's almost like... You could say there's a black circle around it, but you could make it longer and it could even be like you're looking through a, like a scope of some kind. Getting you grounded is really important. I feel there's more energetic value to this black and white space than there is to the other one that I ran into first. I'm going to go straight into your root chakra, okay? Let's see what it looks like in here. Hmm. It's almost like it's grown a... Uh a plant structure, kind of like a, a mushroom. A mushroom is its own thing. It's not a flower. It's not a tree. It's not a blade of grass. It's a mushroom, right? It's almost like mushrooms growing in here. It literally has a biological substance to it. It's a texture. It makes you think of mushrooms growing on the sides of trees. There's also this feeling of holding your breath. Like holding your breath. There's also the feeling of inhaling helium and changing the sound of your voice in a silly way. All of this is going to start to connect the dots. We're going to have to just work with each patch, each individual space of information in order to put it all together. It's like, well, this is puzzle piece doesn't look anything like this puzzle piece doesn't look anything like this puzzle piece. But when you have all the puzzle pieces, it starts to come together and now we can see the bigger picture. So we're just going to have to work with each clue as it comes, okay? I'm just going to talk to your root chakra for a moment. I feel like you want me to do light language. <laughs> and I'm actually, um, I'm, I'm kind of galloping in place on the ground and it's making this kind of drumming sound. I feel a bit like a, a Native American um, doing a dance around a fire, but it's a bright sunny day and I just feel like dancing for the fun of it and feeling the earth beneath my feet. And I kind of want to dance in different ways and it just feels great. And there's something about the legs and the feet and the earth connection that just gets me going. And so I'm just like doing this in here and we're kind of like dancing together now. We're having like a dancing light language moment. We're not making any sounds other than the sounds that our feet make. It's really cool. It's like a dance off light language off, but with our feet. It's so cool. So we're doing that right now. <laughs> we, it's, it's kind of fun because we're playing a game like you can't make any sound. You can't even laugh. You have to be completely silent. You can only use the sound of your feet. So that's what we're that's what we're like like right now. And if you if you laugh or you make a sound, then you're out. Okay, <laughs> that's what it's like. It's really fun. We're having a great time. A lot of inner child energy in here. Just being a free spirit, being silly, being connected to the earth, and loving it, and being hippie like. It really is becoming um quite a quite a fun place to be in here. It still feels like a lot um, of balance, like opportunities to balance things out. But let's just go with this laughter and dancing. It's, it's really fun. Let's see what comes up next. <sighs> 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 
we're still we're still tuning into the earth and it's kind of like we're getting the giggles out or the silly outs we can be more serious because we're getting almost tired to the point that we have no choice but to just collapse onto the ground. And we do. We actually do. And then we lay on the ground and it's it's just like, I mean, I feel the earth in all of its ways beneath me. I feel it on my back, feel it on my shoulders, feel it in my hair. Don't feel any insects crawling on me. But it's got that effect like it's so real. Maybe I should be concerned about getting dirt in my hair or getting, you know, <laughs> bug crawling on me or something. It's that real. It's that authentic. But the bugs never come and we don't... We're okay being just richly connected. And their stars are coming out now. It's kind of a dusty place. It's not, it's like um, a Utah type atmosphere. I could, um, you know how if you drive through that landscape, there's all these different shaped um, like structures, even like pillars of rock um, shaped by the wind and um, and everything just standing there almost impossible the way that they get shaped all different structures of this going on and we're kind of laying flat on top of one of these and you could expect to hear large uh, birds of prey and um, just different types of animals that live in this landscape Something is very much so incomplete. But we don't have the energy to dance, to do the light language dance anymore. Nor does it feel like the right thing for us to be doing next. And you are and I are kind of so in connection. You're we're kind of speaking the same language. <laughs> Like when I say something, I hear you say the exact same thing. It's like, wow, it's almost like we're finishing each other's sentences. <laughs> it's like a moment like that. <laughs> it's like we know each other so well. It feels good like sisterhood, like a really amazing bond. And do you, it's so it's kind of like you have a really good day with with a friend and you do all this lighthearted stuff and then you camp out and there's something about when the stars come out and the fire is lit the more serious conversations just seem to flow out and deep listening and deep sharing and a connection. It's not just the spirit of the earth, it's the spirits themselves. It's the stars, it's the energy of the night. It's two humans and our connection with literally everything in nature and with each other as well. I still feel something is missing and I'm telling you this. We're doing everything right when it comes to getting grounded, getting rooted. You're so connected as it is. What I send you exactly the feeling as it comes to me. And I say this tells me there's something that is a, is a resistance. There's something uh, that is a resistance. Maybe you can help me understand it or we could work together to bring balance to it. Maybe there's another 
um, chakra that we need to take a look at that could assist the root chakra. With this, it's hard to say. It's like everything seems... The image that keeps coming to me is perfect white Tupperware. And you open it and it... <laughs> Was there a time when there was like a commercial about Tupperware that makes like farting noises? <laughs> I don't know, but it's like the perfect Tupperware that makes a farting noise. I, mean, I don't know where this is coming from, but it's perfect white Tupperware and you open it and I don't know why it makes a farting noise. <laughs> but for some reason, this is perfect. <laughs> but that's what is not quite balanced. <laughs> and you agree. So it's a bit of a mystery right now. So we're going to work with the image and we bring it into our, our space together here under the stars. And so we have this white Tupperware and it's pearly. It's a pearly color. You can't see through it. It's got a very classic Tupperware lid. It's not, it's almost a rubbery type of Tupperware lid. There's nothing inside. It's never even been used. It's completely clean. You, the more that we just set it down and the more that it's there, the more it starts to kind of eat you alive for some reason. It's really bothering you. It's just disturbing you. It's disgusting you. And all it's doing is just sitting there, but it's like a stain. You get so irritated by it, you pick it up and you chuck it off of our, like, rock, okay? It's like this unusual rock that's almost like a pillar high above the ground where we somehow appear up here. There's a little fire we have. It's like just enough space for us to comfortably relax together. Then you just throw it right off the side. You just want to be done with this. You want this to go away. And I say thank you for, for tuning into your inner self and, and the natural reactions that you experience from this white Tupperware. And we're, we're, I mean, you're so tuned in. I mean, you were kind of playing that out perfectly because you were trying to figure it out for yourself. So you had to go through the natural emotional responses to it to try to understand it yourself. And it appears, and you're not bothered by the fact that it reappears right next to us. Because you do want to solve this mystery. And you're looking at what I first ran into, and you're wondering if maybe there's something, um, a connection between these two. And maybe this is yet another puzzle piece. And you tell me that, you, uh, that I haven't explored yet the black and the white. And the oddest part is, is I don't, I feel like I don't want to leave you. Because if I go explore the black and the white, then I have to go. That's literally the feeling. Usually I just let, leave a part of myself and then I just go. So that way there's a part of me here, there's a part of me there, there's a part of me over here. So I'm connected to everything. But it literally feels like I have to leave you alone. I have to actually leave you and it's going to be a time where you're going to have to be alone. And you're going to have to solve your problems all by yourself. And I have kind of a male energy when I do this. And it's kind of a knowing between two souls that there is going to be a time of separation. And it is very important for growth. But it will be kind of sad too because there will be a missing of the soul connection, of the friendship, of the... It just seems to speak the same language, finish each other's sentences, that kind of... Um, connection. I'm a, I definitely have a male persona and then I bow to you and I, I have, I tip my hat to you and then I leave. And I feel the hush of silence after I'm gone that you feel and it kind of eats at you like tiny little ants crawling all over your skin, but it isn't ants crawling all over your skin. And it's something you just have to live with. 
but it does create a heaviness inside your heart. Nothing you say to yourself, nothing will ever be the same. And you're okay. It's like trying to soak up every moment, every last second of a very special day. And knowing that no matter how hard you try, the day will end. And you'll probably forget some of these details, you know, 10 years down the road, no matter how hard you want to hang on to all of the seconds and all the minutes of this special time together. That's why you just have to let it flow the way that it flows and let the time pass the way that it needs to pass and just let it be what it needs to be. But it doesn't make it any easier. And for some reason, this conversation is filling in the blanks about the Tupperware. It's just one kind of rectangular shape, rounded edges, kind of a rubber um, top to it. It's more of like a thicker plastic material. And it seems like part of it is emptiness. But I don't feel like it's just emptiness. It's more than that. Now, I am also trying to let you go so I can go to the black and the white. But there's something about my presence keeps lingering and cannot let go of you. Can't let go of our time together in my own invisible world. So I, Abby, am representing some type of spirit that you know, that you're familiar with, that you have a connection with that looks just like this and feels just like this. So it's not just you that struggles. It's also this male um, spirit that also struggles too, just like you do. Because you're finishing each other's sentences. So what you experience, it almost like echoes exactly what he experiences too. And that's why you both have to separate. Sounds, sounds ridiculous, but um, he looks directly at me and shows me that when you start finishing each other's sentences, it, you, you need to create new, new experiences. So you need to go in two different directions so you don't finish each other's sentences. So one person says something that the other wasn't expecting in order to continue to grow together. And then he says thank you to me because he needed to hear that. He needed to remember why it was so important that you both went in two different directions for a while because you were finishing each other's senses. So you need to separate to become molded and shaped in unique ways. So that way, when you come together again in another life, you are speaking different languages and you can continue to grow together. He's very romantic. Um, I mean, he's very romantic feeling and he's kind of saying things like, um, romance novel like I'll, I'll never forget you I'll never forget the time that we <laughs> I don't know like <laughs> romance romance <laughs> it's kind of like romance novel -y, the way that he <laughs> um as he's like daydreaming about I don't know I can't I don't know how to be that sappy I mean I probably I can be that sappy but it's all it's so sappy that trying to take it out of my mouth <laughs> <laughs> doesn't come out okay he's very he's very sappy romance um he's expressing this and he's kind of a cowboy and it makes me think of romance in the stone where she's writing the novel at the beginning and um and that we would be together forever you know it's like this sappy moment but it's so great at the same time because everybody wants that because he's kind of like, he's kind of like a romance guy, okay. He's still like emanating this. He's just a romantic guy, like. 
I'm still listening to him, okay? <laughs> what is he saying? It's just like this puff of energy that is just like a sappy romance novel of all these times he'll never forget you, never ever forget you, never ever like this time and this time and it's very romantic and the smell of your this and the ki way you kiss and the way that you <laughs> on and on and it's kind of like this. And he is saying that, okay, saying many things. The fact that he remembers all these details on a level that every woman would just be like, oh, wow, you know, maybe every woman would, I don't, but it's like, but he, it's almost like photographic memoried all these moments with you because he never wanted to forget you, almost like his soul knew that he would have to leave. And he, when that day came, would come, he would have all these photographic memories of every little thing that he loved the most about you, that he cherished, and that he would just sort of swim in all of these memories and almost wrap himself up in it so that it's like he never left you. And he really wants to emphasize that's how much he loves you. That's how much you meant to him. He still can't turn around and look away. He still can't. So I can't force him to. And I can't go to the black and white until he is ready to go to the black and white. So I'm starting to be part of a love triangle here. <laughs> I'm just kind of this observer watching you, watching him, and he's really expressing a lot right now. But I'm, I'm also showing him how, how beautiful that is. But that's called attachment. So you can't have new experiences if you're attached to the old ones, right? The whole point of this is about letting go. The whole point of this is about having you have your experiences, she has her experiences, you come back and you don't speak the same languages. You're not finishing each other's sentences. You're, you're sh sharing something new with one another and growing in new ways. Oh, he he needed that reminder. Uh, he, I can feel. And when he changes energetically inside of himself, you also change energetically inside of yourself. Because I can feel that now that that reminded, reminder reached him, and he's ch choosing to work on letting go of all the photographic memories of you, he he realizes he has to do that. And so he's going to do that for you. I say, why don't you do that for yourself? It's to really emphasize moving on. You have to do that for yourself. They're not I'm not allowed to get into your orb of experience. I just watch you sort of looking off um, in kind of a daze into the distance of your own internal process. But I do experience loudly what he's going through. And I'm to communicate with him. And as he shifts inside, I simultaneously can feel you shifting and receiving that change inside yourself. It's shifting your dynamic too. As he lets go of you, you're able to also find a freedom to start something new, okay? All right, this is the hard part because the more he lets go, there's something um, aggressive and gross looking underneath the surface. Um, some kind of possessive demonic side, okay? The sappy romantic guy has a possessive demonic side? <laughs> He isn't that scary, by the way. It's just like love that becomes um, a little bit too um, smothering, but you were cool with it. 
you that was part of why you work so well together so it wasn't a demonic side right because you were fine with it that's why you had to go your separate direction so it can reveal what's beneath the surface of each other that can get looked at and can get worked on in new ways this is important Hmm. Yeah, this is this is rising. This is coming to a surface. So this angelic lover, you know, is now got this loud demonic possessive um side and they're kind of uh it's like the angelic lover is okay stepping aside because this has this has to come out. This is the opposing extreme, okay? This is the opposing extreme. So now we need to bring balance to both sides. So the extreme of the angelic lover, this romantic, sappy guy, right? Which is beautiful, right? That's his beauty that he shares. Now it has to be brought into balance by bringing forward this possessive demonic side. So that way they can meet in the middle and now be reborn as a new harmonious self-expression. Which is also going to rebirth some part of your own soul because you and him are so inter intertwined. He's still struggling to let go. And he's um, he's starting to forget um, the light side of himself. And he's starting to kind of um, be very, very attracted to you. And he can't remember why. Because the other side is getting muted. So now this side is getting a lot louder. I create an extremely loud sound, louder than everything. It's so loud it would break your eardrums. Because I need to get him to stop looking at you. And I need him to come with me to the black and the white. We need to go to that space. And I hear a part of this man, his higher self, say that um, he feels wounded without you. And that's why he is transforming into this kind of demonic self. And he does look kind of like a hellish looking demon. And he's got like a sticky gooey skin. He has um, pointy ears. He looks like half man, half animal. He has a bit of a snout and sharp teeth. And he's kind of destroying, ripping himself apart in agony. There's a massive change that you're going through as well, but I, I am being shielded on purpose. So I, I can't see that right now. I'm still just seeing him, okay? I may have to let him go so that I can see you. Because it's not all um, rainbows and cupcakes over there. You're, it's not all perfect. You still look peaceful, cozy on top of this rock and the stars, and you're just kind of staring into the distance. I can tell you're going through um, your own version of hell. You just want people to see um, how perfect and how well you're handling this. But nope. Not true. I... I... <laughs> I'm slowly able to kind of, he's going to do, go do his thing over here. I'm not to the black and white space yet, but I create a, a pound on my, I just pound my fist really hard and I say, be honest about your feelings and express them tr truthfully and don't, don't hide everything inside. Cry if you need to cry. Be angry if you need to be angry. Because this has to come out. It's almost turning into a bunch of very sharp splinters. Um, so if you're not expressing the emotions and processing that, it's turning into um, splint splintered energy inside yourself. And it's hurting you very, very bad inside. But you keep smiling and showing everybody how put together you are. and No big deal. But inside, it is a nightmare.
a connection between your two souls. This is in your roots. You see, this is this is a big deal to bring this into balance. This story still isn't over yet, you know? I'm slowly but surely making my way towards you just a little bit more. You're, hi you're, you're hiding yourself in a white cotton ball. And you also show me that it's also like um, a dandelion that has aged. So it's got the white um, seeds. You're hiding yourself inside of one of those too. But I can't see you. It's so thick with white. And, you, and you're starting to get very angry and you want everybody to leave you alone. You say that with an aggressive um, and serious tone. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, I feel like I gotta start teasing you for some reason. Because <laughs> you're so serious and angry. And you're trying to hide yourself from everybody. You think that's gonna solve your problems. Are you serious? Uh, so now I'm gonna have to like ruffle your feathers a lot to get you out of your little white cotton ball hiding place. <laughs> I gotta really get you to express yourself. I mean, he's going full bore. I mean, he's transformed into a, a full on demon here. Like, why don't we go just express some things here? It's okay, there's no ugliness in it. It's just called having one extreme experience and going to another extreme experience in order to find the balance in both of them. So what's truly beautiful, what's truly ugly, it's all about the balance. Just let yourself go. Have like a moment of freedom. Just be whatever you want to be. You turn into a, a pig with really big tusks and you squeal. And you keep echoing me, somebody with a hand that slaps you on the pig butt, and I can hear the slap, and then you squeal. But you're not able to run away. And then it get, you get spanked again. <laughs> and you squeal, and then you're not able to run away, and you have a collar now, and a chain, and you are chained, and you are also sort of glued, stuck to the ground, cemented into the ground, but yet you're still alive. This is horrifying. It's, I can feel how hard this is. This is good. This is what we need to do. But I, I'm helping you vent this out. And it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of struggle. You hate this. <laughs> and I nod and say, mm-hmm, yeah. I agree. It sucks. <laughs> I would feel the same way. No, there's nothing fun about this. I agree. No, you're like, no, I hate this. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm, you're, the energy of stress coming out of your face is like, like, like squeezing Play-Doh out of like a Play-Doh toy like you're squeezing it out and you're just squeezing out this anger i hate this <laughs> that's what you're doing i don't mean to laugh but it's kind of funny but i know it's really hard and i feel how hard it is so i'm kind of conflicted right now You're still, like, it's it's like this rep repetitious nightmare. Getting sp spanked really, 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 really hard. Squealing because it hurts really bad. And you can't go anywhere. And you're chained up and cemented down. And you're still on this, like, rock. And you're still able to look into the distance. <sighs> it's almost like reminding you of what you had and what you do not have anymore. And what you have now. But you aren't really living in the past. You're, you really are choosing to live in the present. But you aren't enjoying the present. And I touch your third eye. And I touch your heart. And I look deeply into your eyes. And it's to give you the strength. And the patience. Um, it's almost don't resist the pain. It's hard not to, 
but you will have to really embrace the situation be completely present in it and it will actually transmute the energies faster than you can imagine but when you resist it you create a friction that doesn't resolve it just keeps vibrating but when you embrace it that frequency stops and you just become whole and you become patient and you become accepting and at peace with the experience and that's when you tune into your true angelic nature that's when everything changes you really don't like the way the universe sets these things up it's like you can have the perfect romance but the perfect romance isn't necessarily the most balanced And then when that perfect romance is separated, the suffering that two souls go through is so horrendous. And the demonic sides that have to come out in order to heal and transmute those sides before you can come back together again, it's such a painful process. It's like ripping your arms off and waiting for them to grow back. It's like the most painful and almost impossible feeling process. And it feels completely and utterly wrong. And I ask you what love means to you. And you start to think about that silly light language dance we were doing. And you say love is freedom of expression, self-expression. Just freedom to just say whatever I want to say and do whatever I want to do with my body. It, it's um, the whole, it's like the whole picture. It's being me it's being truly me and all me and to be loved for being me all me and i say is isn't there more than just one love you kind of say oh I've been putting myself through all this suffering because I haven't been able to let go of one love. And this whole time I could have been open to a new kind of love and I wasn't wanting to be open to anybody else. And by resisting the true nature of all creation which is that we're all soulmates and we're all connected. I s created this imprisonment and suffering. And I did this to myself. And then I show you an echo of what I saw happening to him. And I said he d did it as well. And you say, I do truly need to let him go. And I do need to explore other souls. I do need to explore other loves. I turn into an Asian oriental person and I, and I just bow before you in honor and reverence and respect of what you just said. And of your soul journey and the hardships you've been through and how hard and complicated and wonderful and wrong it can be, right? But that was powerful and well said. And you're still on top of this rock. You've been here for so long. It's like long overdue for you to leave, for you to move on from everything. And you want to become a bird. You want to become a bird. You don't want to climb down. You don't want to have feet that walk. You want to have wings that soar. And so I just... It's like 
there's a t there's a conversation I'm having with you about setting your soul free and it in the feeling and I I'm agreeing with the feeling myself how wonderful to soar on the breeze it's so freeing and it gives you access to the bigger picture right She, she says, for some reason, don't let me down. And she and then she says, I won't let myself down. And this has meaning because obviously you're trying to get down off of this rock structure, right? Don't let me down, as in she's saying this to herself. Don't let me down. Um, learn how to be free. Learn how to be open to others. And then I won't let myself down. And in order to transform into this bird to truly be free. And to allow herself to experience that freedom. But there's this feeling of, I don't, please don't disappoint me to herself. Like, I don't want to disappoint myself. I don't want to do that again, the pig thing. I just don't want to get lost in that energy again. <laughs> and I say, do you want to be a bird or not? <laughs> I mean, do you want to just stay here for the forever, for all eternity? Or you have to let go. You still need to work on letting go. <sighs> you say, I can't do it. And then you think about becoming a fire and becoming all the flames of the fire. And maybe you could release yourself by being a flame or becoming the smoke. And then becoming part of the breeze. And then you say, no, I, that, I don't want to, I can't do that. And then you think about climbing down. And you're like, no, I, I can't do that. Maybe I could be some dust on the wind. No, I can't do that. And you, you're suddenly now like in this cycle of ideas and can't follow through with any of them. But a desperation for change, a desperation to be set free, to set yourself free. Don't let me down. I won't let you down. But being trapped and stuck now in this energy. It's kind of like all those little atoms that were all these different ideas that were all at once, but then everything's so fast, but everything's so slow, creating this weird pearl structure. This pearl Tupperware, like there's something about the, there's nothing inside, but there's nothing inside of it. This doesn't even fart. This doesn't even make a noise. You know, like this doesn't, it's like, there's nothing special about this Tupperware. And, and now it's starting to bring back memories of how mad that stupid Tupperware made you. Chucking it off the side. Only to find it's right back with you. And now you see me and we're kind of back in time and I'm this cowboy man. And you, your eyes are different and you hate my guts. You say, it's you. It's you. You put me through this. You did this to me. And all these experiences and the pig getting spanked and being trapped on this rock forever, never being able to be make a decision, never being able to be set free. When at one time you were both finishing each other's sentences, everything was perfect. Now you just needed to go your separate ways, right? So you could come back together and speak different languages. Now we're at the part of this journey where you hate each other. Because you went through all that hell because you had to separate from each other and it was wrong. But yet, we're still not letting go of each other, are we? Still not letting go. You still have not let go. You're still not allowing yourself to move on. Man, you are stuck in like a, a paradox of like never ending... And you're trapped, like you're stuck, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you work through this with yourself for a little bit. I'm gonna go check on your <laughs> cowboy man slash animal demon man. See what he's got going on here. 
Oh, gosh. It's... I don't know. I I really feel like it's way worse. He's um, stuck in razor blades that come straight out of the ground and slice through his body, and it never really cuts him into pieces. But he has this pain everywhere, all over him, and he can't move through it. He can't move through it at all. He's completely and utterly stuck. And his heart aches and longs for you to come back to him in order to help him. Because he can't do it without you. He can't live without you. And all this comes out. It, it could almost be manipulative. Like, like, see how I am hurting without you. I need you. And if I don't have you, then... I am now hurting like this all because of you. <laughs> but he never goes there with it. He never does go into that manipulative place, but he will not stop saying that he can't do this without you over and over and over and over and over again. It's like wanting your soul to find him through feeling sorry for him. <laughs> there is something in the wind here about this. And it's unhealthy. He still isn't letting go of you. Which then would take all of his pain away. You letting go of him. Take all of your pain away. Is really this so wrong? Or do you just need to accept change? Move on. Find somebody new. Because you forget you're coming from source here. Literally... You're just saying, this is the only part of God I will ever love. I won't ever love any other part of God. <laughs> okay. Well, that's kind of like rejecting yourself and all yourselves. Because we're all part of God. <laughs> so you're not really getting to know the other parts of yourself. Only just one part. And only that part matters. That's not the way of the universe. That's not the way God works. I'm asking your higher selves, what can I do to bring balance to this? And I'm reminding of the of the black and white place. So I'm going to leave you both to your, your locations. And then I'm going to go to this black and white place. Oh my god, it's really hard on my eyes. It's really hard on my third eye. It's a, a frequency that hurts really bad. And when you come close to it, it's like ripping you into shreds. But once you've been through so much pain, you don't even care anymore. You'll go through all that pain just to get to the other side. Because you've already been through so much pain already that you could withstand so much more pain just to be done with all this pain. <laughs> That's what the feeling is that comes to me. So I just like move through it and just endure all this pain and being ripped apart. And because I know if I can just get through to the other side, I will learn the lesson and, and I will rise above all of this. And it will be over. But this is very complicated because this is a bit of a manipulation in its own right. The This is an... Um, if I, <laughs> I have no idea how you would create this, but it's a magic eye. It's a magic eye in the energy world. <sighs> And the black kind of projects out to make it look like it's a pathway. Like a like I could look down the tunnel and see then the white at the end of the tunnel. Like the light at the end of the tunnel. But it's, it's a magic eye. It's like, it's almost like there is no tunnel. It's just like a black ring. But the white is also projected. And it's, so it's very hard to understand. Is it a pathway? Is it a doorway? Is it a, like, what is it exactly? But it does, in the process of getting to it, whatever that means, because it's a magic eye um, situation, we don't even know what it really is because our eyes can't really see the truth here. <laughs> it's ripping me apart, you know, but I'm just a reflection of what it all means, okay? So what I'm going through is what the energy and everything means. So I choose to be blind. 
And I just go for it without trying to make any sense of it, without believing anything my eyes see. I don't need to see it at all. I'm just going to be completely without sight and I'm going to go to it because I'm going to follow my heart. I'm going to follow my heart there. That's when it everything stops. I didn't realize how loud this whole experience was. The screaming of all the different variations of time that your soul endured on that rock and the screaming and pain of him and everything he endured in his own personal hell. I didn't realize how absolutely loud and chaotic Again, it's like all the atoms and that loud sound that they're all making at the same time, but yet they're all individual ideas. And somehow they come together to create this weird structure. But what does it mean, right? It's all stopped. No sound. And now it's like this perfect white Tupperware. It makes no sound. And it's clean and it's like perfect. It's like the perfect Tupperware. And it isn't empty at all. It just happens to be the structure of itself. It's useful. I don't know why I'm kind of going through this list of all the reasons why this Tupperware is wonderful just the way that it is. And it doesn't need to be molded. It doesn't need to be shaped. It's already in its shape. It's already in its form. This is an even more complicated energy because it's not what it seems, okay? It's a magic eye. It's also like a magic eye in the energy world, which makes it very complex, but it's almost demonic, okay? <laughs> I really have to pay attention here. It's like tr desperately trying to find the answer, only to find more riddles, even to rip yourself apart in order to reach it, only to find some wisdom about the perfection of Tupperware, and what is really useful and what is really useless. It's like the whole meaning of life that wants you to get wrapped up and wound up in all of this chaos. And to lose your path, to lose your sight, to lose your direction, to just want to be set free, to get the answer already. And now what? And why is this happening to me? And why can't I let go? And why can't I move on? It's pure chaos. But it's chaos that is in, in almost a balanced state. That is encouraging chaos that is out of balance. And it is like a being, an actual being, an actual consciousness. I don't want to call it an entity because it's actually a far more incredible than an entity. It's like a, its own dynamic. It's It has wisdom, all right? Entities have wisdom too, but this is something else. This is like its own... It's... It's really something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're done. And I'm pulling this energy in. Literally, it's almost like trying to stuff a... You ever get a sleeping bag, you buy them, and they have these like impossible little bags that they come out of? Like, And you have to stuff it somehow back into this tiny bag. <laughs> Does anybody else wonder why these sleeping bags come out of these impossible little bags? <laughs> Alright, well I'm stuffing it, kind of like a sleeping bag inside this like impossible little bag. I'm just stuffing it in there. This 
incredible consciousness because it's meaning in your energy field and connection with you and this other soul and in incomprehensible time and overlapping time and overlapping time on and on and on it i am just it's done so i am stuffing it into this little bag and i'm removing it from your energy field why can't i just done that in the beginning because we had to see all of this. We had to understand all of this. You needed to know about this other soul. You needed to know what your soul has been through. You needed to know what his soul has been through. You needed to know the meaning of life and, and how you can get lost in this chaos when you don't let go of attachments. When you don't choose to see the value in literally everything. I think you're somebody who can see the value in everything. But there's some aspect of your soul that needed the reminder because it's been through some some severe pain through other experiences that was kind of inconceivable like it was so hard now we get it you get it you get it now so well that i have the power to stuff this extraordinary consciousness into a little bag and take it out of your energy field you're gonna feel like a weird silence has overcome you and it's like freedom <laughs> it's gonna feel like freedom and it's gonna feel like love and value of this other soul in a way that it wasn't lost in the love but it was respecting the love and same from him to you because as you receive shifts and changes he does as well you have a very close you have a very interesting soul connection here almost got this out and um, it is actually a type of angel and it has a yin yang symbol it's got one black wing white one white wing and it's um, got a yin yang symbol across its chest and it's half black and half white and it's it's all sexual identities it's 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 like and it's all sexual identities at once And it bows before you and it's been um, guiding you through very through lessons and understanding chaos and this actually now that I can see this I'm like stuffing this this in here and I'm like taking this bag out and then I'm like I don't know what do I do with this and then it transforms into this angel and then the angels like bowing and helping me to understand it's been like an angel. It's like been a part of your journey, a part of your frequency that's been challenging you in layers of lifetimes. It, I don't, that is complete for as, as far as I, I'm just going to say you're in a really good place right now when it comes to an inner peace and an inner silence. I think in some ways we're all kind of learning with that energy, that angel. That angel is a part of source, so that angel is a part of literally everything. It's just how how tuned into that energy are you. And then the more tuned into it you are, the more wrapped up in it you can be. And then you can get lost in it. But that's the teacher. That's the teacher of chaos through this angel. Everything disappears. You're not on the top of a rock. He's not at all with all these razors. Like, it was all like some weird reality. It was definitely, you're pretty sure it was real, but it was all just like... You're wondering what memories to make, like what to make sense of any of this, because what are the actual memories if none of it was real? feels a lot more peaceful because I was just like maybe you just want to move on already but because this is so peaceful now there's no because there's no real memories there's no concept of moving on exactly so I just see you and him looking at each other and hugging each other but it's not it's like um respecting the love between you both you were your souls were out of balance with the love between you both 
you now are in respect and honor of that love. One is not more possessive of the other. It's, it's actually respecting the love between you both. And I see you both kind of are at peace now. And there's no attachment to anything. It's just like it's done. Okay. What a grand finale. It's like the movie credits are going right now. <laughs> this was just something amazing and thank you so much. Man, life is going to have a new meaning to you. I can feel that blossoming inside yourself. It feels like if you were to eat cereal for breakfast, it's going to taste slightly different than all the other cereals you ever had for breakfast. Like if you ate honey bunches of oats every day for five straight years, it would taste like Cheerios. <laughs> I swear, like, that's how loud this, like, life is going to have new meaning feeling is inside yourself. It's like, life is going, you're going to notice something is different. Wow, it's, I'm just, I'm still in your energy field a bit because there's just so much, like, harmonizing going on. It's pretty awing. And I was so deep in there, I'm, like, moving myself back still into my own body. <sighs> What do you say, you know, <laughs> after something that extraordinary? All right. Thank you so much. What a beautiful experience, uh, extraordinary experience. Thank you for sharing. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.